Namaskaromi, swagatam sarve byaha. So now that the easier non aganas are out of the way, let's now get down to the real business, right? Uh, and take a long but careful look at some of the more challenging verb conjugations that are out there in the Sanskrit language. We'll start with the third class, the hu gana. This is named after the root hu, uh, uh, which means to offer, and especially to offer a sacrifice, Vedic sacrifice, hawana. Uh, this is conjugated in the strong form as juhoti, he, she, or it offers. The weak form is juhumaha, we offer. Juhoti, juhumaha. As you can tell, these stems are different from the other ganas that we're looking at, uh, and it involves a kind of a higher degree of processing of the verb, and this processing is known as reduplication or abhyasa. It's kind of complicated, but it's also kind of fun to play around with, I'm not going to lie. And, and we'll find abhyasa in uh, several other situations in the language down the road. Uh, so let's dig into abhyasa a little bit uh, and see how it's done for the third class let. Then we'll jump into uh, the kind of rules of forming the stems. First, the idea of reduplication is that some part of the root is going to get prefixed to the root. Uh, I can think, I like to think of it as like a pre-echo in a way. Uh, most of the roots of the hugana of class three, and the, especially the ones we're going to be considering at the start, they're all going to be of the form consonant vowel, CV. Uh, here, the reduplication form is going to look like this. It's, it'll be C sub one, small v, then CV. C sub one is an unaspirated version of our consonant C, and the small v is a shortened version of the vowel V. So in the case of the root da, for example, which means to give, the reduplicated version is going to be da da. The first vowel gets shortened from a to a. And for da, which means to place or put, we're now going to lose the aspiration of the consonant. It's going to go from da to da gara, uh, and the vowel will, will, will the vowel will reduce from a ah to short a, uh, giving us da da. Similarly, if the root is b, uh, to be afraid, the shortened version is bb, where the long e is shortened to the short e, ikara, and the bhkara loses its aspiration and becomes the bhkara. So we get bb as the abhyasa. When the vowel is a vocalic r, it's going to shorten to a short e. So for example, for the root bru, which means to bear or to hold up something, the reduplicated prefix first will lose the aspiration, and the bhakara will become a bhakara. The vocalic r is going to reduce to a short e, giving us bibru. It's kind of complicated. Uh, other, another common thing to notice is about abhyasa is that if the initial consonant is a velar, uh, the k varga is going to reduce to a palatal. In particular, the velar voiced aspirate h is going to become the voiced palatal j. So ha to abandon is going to reduplicate to jaha. Hu is going to reduplicate to juhu. So with these basic ideas about reduplication or abhyasa in mind, we can now turn to looking at how to get from root to stem in the conjugation of class three verbs. In, uh, again, we're gonna, have, we're gonna end up with two different stems. Since it's a non-agana, we'll have a strong stem, which is used for parasmaipada singular forms. This is ti, si, and ni. And we'll have a weak stem, which is used for all the other parasmaipada endings and the entirety of the atmanaipada paradigm. To form our strong stems in class three, wh what you do is you first apply a byasa to the root, reduplicate the root, and then you're going to gunate the second syllable of your abhyasa, in other words, the original root. To form the weak stem, you just do abhyasa, you just reduplicate the root with no gunation, and that's it. So let's take our characteristic root hu to offer. You're first going to reduplicate the root, right, abhyasa, and the prefixed syllable, the hakara is going to reduplicate as a j gara, the j, and then the short u is going to stay a short u since it's already a short vowel. That's, uh, so we get juhu, and that's our weak stem. To make our strong stem, you then take your weak stem and you gunate the second syllable hu, so we get juho. 
That's your two stems. Juho, which is the strong stem. Juhu, which is the weak stem. Then we're going to add our singular parasmai pada endings to our strong stem to get juho ti. She, he, it offers. Juho shi, you offer. Notice again now that the by now normal S sandhi rule is going to be triggered by our o kara. Then we have juho mi, I offer. For all the other endings, we'll, we'll take our weak stem juhu and we'll do juhu taha. They both offer juhuati. Is they three or more offer? Now, whoa, hang on a second here. Wait a minute. Did I make a mistake? Is it a typo? Juhuati? What? Shouldn't it be juhuanti? Aren't you, what are you, are you, are you screwed up? No, no. Well, it turns out that the third gonna has this one extra little twist if there aren't enough twists, which is that for the third person plural, for the prathama purusha bahuvachana parasme pada, we lose the N in the ending. So it's just ati. It's very confusing. It's very confusing. I'm sorry. But all, it's all part of this fun roller coaster ride that we call Sanskrit grammar, right? So, juhuati, they offer three or more. All the others are going to be quite regular. Juhuta, you both offer. Juhuta, you three or more offer. Juhuwaha, we both offer. Juhumaha, we all offer. Let's look at a few other third class roots. The root br, which means to carry or bear up something. This is cognate with the English bear, actually. Br. Uh, this will reduplicate as bi br, uh, as we already saw, where the b loses its aspiration and the vocalic r becomes a short e. Then when you gunate that, you're going to get bi bar as the strong stem, and the weak stem is bi br. So we'll have bi barti. He, she, it carries or bears. Bibharmi, you carry or bear. Bibharmi, uh, I carry. Right? For the weak forms, we'll see bibrutaha, the two of them bear. Bibrutaha, the two of you bear. Bibruaha, we bear, both of us. Right? Now for the third person plural, again, it's the ending is ati, not anti. So with the sandhi, it's going to become bibrati. Notice here that the vocalic R has switched to a consonant. Ra kara, bibrati, they bear. The singular is bibharti, the plural is bibrati. <laughs> so there you go, it's very tricky. The others are easier. Bibrutha, you all bear. Bibrumaha, we three or more are carrying or bearing up something. The important third class verb is bi, which means to be afraid. Here the reduplication is again going to lose aspiration and shorten the vowel. You'll get bibi. When you gunate, uh, you'll get the strong stem bibe. So you get bibeti. Right? The weak stem is going to remain bibi. Bibeti, he, she, it is afraid. Bibe, she, you are afraid. Bibe, me, I am afraid. The two, they two are afraid will be bibi taha. They three or more are afraid. Bibiati. Again, the dropped N, looking very, very close to the singular bibeti. He, she, it is afraid. Bibiati, they are afraid. Very easy to make this mistake. Now, with that, let's turn to, to irregular forms of the third class, believe it or not. Uh, one very important one is da, which means to give. Da reduplicates as the da, the shortening of the second vowel. Uh, da, uh, the, since the guna vaza, the, the strong form, is, all, is da da, the weak stem is now going to downgrade the root uh, and it's going to lose its vowel entirely. So it becomes dud. Right? Strong stem is da da, weak stem is dud. So it's very irregular. But as my pada singulars, we'll get da da ti, he, she, it gives, da da si, you give, da da mi, I give. So far, so good. Now, all the others are going to use the weak form of the stem. And because it ends in a consonant, dud, we're going to get some intricate sandhi rules. Dud plus taha becomes dattaha. The da loses its voicing to match the takara. Dattaha, they both give. Dattaha, the two of you give. Datta, you plural give. For the third person plural, we're going to use dud and add ati. So we end up with dadati. They three or more give. The contrast between, again, first person singular and third, per, uh, third person plural is very minute, very confusing. Da dati versus da dati. For the first person, we'll have da dwaha, we both give. Da dmaha, we all give. Second irregular verb, which we'll take up here, is da, get ready. 
for which means to place or put something. This will work like da in that there's the dropping of the a ah in the weak stem. So the strong stem reduplicates as the da, the da kara losing its voicing in the first syllable, the da, but the weak stem is going to lose the long a, ah, so it becomes da. And this will lead to all kinds of complicated sandhi, including a very fascinating rule that gets known as Grassmann's law. But anyway, here we have a strong stem da da and the weak stem da da. The strong stem, we're going to get our regular conjugation, da da ti. He places, she places, it puts or places. Da da si, you put. Da da mi, I put. Now with the duals, we're going to have dud plus da. This da kara in the ending is unvoiced and unaspirated, so it triggers the da to lose both its voicing and its aspiration, uh, since you can never have an aspirate followed by another stop. But now we have a phenomenon where that aspiration doesn't actually disappear, but it has to jump into the first consonant. So it becomes dattaha, not dattaha. This jumping of aspiration is known as Grassmann's law. It's named after a German linguist, Hermann Grassmann, who described it actually not just a happening in Sanskrit, in Sanskrit, we already knew about it, but he found that it happens across other Indo-European languages as well. So it's a generalized rule. The same rule, Grassmann's law, applies for the second person duel. So you get datta, uh, the two of you put, and datta, you three or more put. For the third person plural, we don't have to do this funky sandhi. We just add our ati ending, so we get dadhati. They put or place three or more. Dadhati, dadhati. For the first person, it's a bit straightforward in the dual and plural. Dadwa, we to put or place. Dadmaha, we put or place, plural. Now, if you're, if you're clever and you're following along, you're like, hey, hang on. Why don't we do Grassmann's law here? Why isn't it dadmaha? Well, the idea is that because wa and ma are not in your class stops, it's a nasal, maha, and it's a semi-vowel, waha. The aspiration remains where it is. You don't have to lose the aspiration. So, just to tease you even further, let's flip to our Atmanepada side of Dha, and you see many more instances of this transmigration of the aspiration. For third person singular, we use the weak stem Dud, you add Te, and you get Dhatte, he, she, it puts. Look at that migrating aspirate to the first. The dual, it's going to be dadhate, the two of them place or put. The plural, it's dadhate, they three or more put. In the second person, we have dadse, you put. Here again, the S is unaspirated. It'll trigger the movement of the aspiration to the first consonant. Uh, then we get dadhate, you both put, and dadadwe, you all put. Here the voicing has remained at the end of the weak stem since the ending dwe starts with a voiced aspirate. But since we can't have an aspirate, aspirate cluster, it loses aspiration and migrates to that first consonant. Dud becomes dud plus dwe. Dud dwe. It's good. You all put. It's very complicated. Uh, for first person Atmanepada, it gets a little bit easier. Dudhe, I put or place. Dudwehe. We both put or place, and dadmahe, we put or place three or more. So now that we've placed all of this information in our heads, so to speak, we can pause here, take a break, a long break, get some fresh air, recover from our Sunday craziness, and then we can come back and take on the last, maybe even more challenging of our non uh, ganas, which is the seventh class known as the Rud Gana. So until then, thanks for watching. See you next time. Punar Milamaha Danyawadaha.